Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part four, the final part for today. It's Friday, February 15th, 2013. Okay, this article I have up, this first one is UK warned CIA will access all government data. So I'm sure they do this already, but if you didn't know, now you know. US intelligence agencies will soon be able to trawl through all British government documents stored online, including uh, these files from the ministry, local authority records, and public sector data uh, thanks to an unchallenged amendment to a spy law in Washington. So the British ambitious plans to store all government data on the so-called G-Cloud have led to warnings from the European Union and security will be compromised now that the U.S. intelligence agencies have the legal right to survey all data held on U.S.-owned cloud services. So anyways, I'm going to move on here. Texas DMV sells personal information to hundreds of companies, drivers not allowed to opt out. So that's nice of them. Uh, it says here, that uh, fun, dubious, privacy-violating stuff happening out in Texas where the Department of Motor Vehicles has made a tidy sum selling the information it collects, including names, addresses, makes and models owned to a variety of private companies. The Texas DMV claims its top priority is protecting drivers' information, but that hardly seems to be the case when it's pulling $2.1 million a year selling it off. So... Yep, they're a custodian over 22 million currently registered vehicles at the state of Texas. All those records are in their database, however, are protected under the Driver Privacy Protection Act. This is a fine print, actually. It says businesses can use your information for marketing or solicitations if the state has obtained your consent. That means some drivers can opt in or out of the, these databases. Problem is, Texas didn't adopt that portion of the law, so drivers in the lone state are stuck. Software that trace, tracks people on social media created by defense firm. So um, Radeon's Riot program mines social network data like a Google for spies drawing ear from civil rights groups. Multinational security firm Radeon has secretly developed software capable of tracking people's movements and predicting future behavior by mining data from social networking websites. So it doesn't matter what um, privacy advocates uh, really think. Um, you know, it's, this is what it's designed for, so by the military industrial complex to be handed down to police forces so that they can monitor as these um, uh, uh, protesters sit there and tweet and Facebook and stuff on their smartphones and give all the information or location to the cops uh, so they can uh, basically trap them in some kind of alley corner and hog tie them, treat them like terrorists. TSA naked x ray scanners to be used in office buildings. Government employees are set to be bombarded with radiation on a daily basis. If a plan to move X-ray firing TSA body scanners into office buildings goes ahead, they announced last month at TSA that is that it was ending its contract with Rapiscan, the makers of the controversial backscatter X-ray body scanners, and who Michael Shertoff, former what is it uh, Department of Homeland Security, in that uh, basically had a stock in that company. The mainstream media uh, uniformly announced that the federal agency was removing the scanners from the use altogether. However, it was blatantly clear that this would never be the case. The TSA is already under strict scrutiny from Congress over the mothballing of a $14 million worth of body scanners. All in all, 250 of these scanners the agency now has are worth a combined total of $40 million. So the real reason that they're being removed is allegations that Rapiscan manipulated operational tests on the machines and the company was never able to develop the Stickman software that masks naked images produced by the scanners. And I just hope that people will forget that. That's how they run these stories. You have Intel's new TV box to point creepy spy camera at your face. So most of this already has this. Um, Intel has confirmed it will be selling a set-top box direct to public later this year along with a streaming TV service designed to watch you while you're watching it. The device will come from Intel Media, and it says here that uh, it's a move that will put Chipzilla firmly into the U.S. living room and no doubt ignite a host of privacy concerns for those uh, who want to watch without being watched. And this has probably been happening for a long time. I mean, it's kind of creepy when you think about how maybe even back in the 50s in these black and white TVs, uh, that they could actually look through them. You could say, well, they weren't hooked up to cable. Well, if there's if there's um, radio frequencies and that uh, going through the antenna, through the television, there's a good chance that it can go both ways. So they always just say that it's a, a transmitter or a receiver, but they never talk about uh, transceivers that can transmit and receive information, like the nanoparticles flowing through your uh, through your blood brain barrier, through your blood itself, and through your and your lungs. Right? They're transceivers. 
Uh, Fed's okay first bionic eye to help blind. Device gives limited vision to those with retinal disease. So it's going to help the elderly, and it has nothing to do with creating cyborgs. So 91% uh, agree uh, with the Russian who said that um, artificial intelligence and uh, singularity is going to go really bad for humans because they're going to end up killing the humans in the process. So that's brilliant. Cheap, strong lithium-ion battery developed at USC. Researchers developed a new lithium-ion battery design that uses porous silicon nanoparticles in place of the traditional graphite anodes, uh, anodes uh, to provide superior performance. It can be used in cell phones, hybrid cars, hold three times as much energy as compar comparable to graphite-based designs and recharge within 10 minutes. It will be commercially available within two years. 800 more children permanently harmed by vaccines. You have more evidence has emerged showing that the GSK vaccine pandemics, which was widely administered throughout Europe during the 09-010, uh, basically flu fear pandemic, whatever it was, was responsible for causing serious and permanent side effects and many of the children that received it, at least 800 children, it turns out, many of whom lived in Sweden, uh, now have narcolepsy because of the vaccine. So it says, and some government officials are demanding answers. We'll see if they'll get them. Uganda deports British theater producer over uh, gay play. So it says gay tolerance clearly has a long way to go in some African states. That means uh, the importation of this uh, different type of lifestyle into their culture. And that's why they do things like up in Mali where they just fragment everybody, create refugees like in Syria to fragment their culture so they can create a new one. Um, the British producer, you know, it's like exporting Americanism, right? What is American culture? Well, you know, it's just, I see, you know, it's like uh, I saw a calendar and it was of all these nice countries. And it's like, wow, they have such beautiful architecture in like Syria where it's being destroyed by terrorists and the West. And it's like they have culture. And it's like you come here and it's like, what is our culture in America? It's just, you know, it's Burger King and it's Coca-Cola and it's, it's fat, obese people on scooters, you know what I mean, running into each other and just... Man, that's American culture. Work until you die. You know, just slaving away to keep, you know, to keep running. Like I said, the British producer of a play about homosexuals has enraged authorities in Uganda, leading to his deportation back to the UK. So, according to the BBC, the state of Uganda, where homosexuality is prohibited by law, started legal action against the producer, uh, was arrested for disobeying lawful orders. So, this is kind of in Russia, where they told Madonna they didn't want her propagandizing homosexuality. Uh, to children, and there were children in her audience, and she did it anyways, and she supposedly got, like, fined for it. Uh, but then it's like, what, in South America, um, they're not really all for this stuff either, and they actually have laws that, you know, you can't be out uh, holding hands and stuff like that. You know, it sucks about bans and laws and stuff like that, I'm not really all for it, but uh, th this is really is a minority, and it's being pushed uh, for a reason, like I said, fragmenting societies. Gays behind wrestling, and like, that's the thing, it's hard, it's in saying that, you just have to remember that that a lot of these people are the most uh, uh, non-tolerant of other people. So you just have to keep that in mind. They're very, uh, they, they lack tolerance of other people. With no official comment from the International Olympic Committee on depriving wrestling of its Olympic status, experts and fans continue to guess. So gaze behind wrestling, uh, Olympic demotion. So. The guy who uh, coached the Olympic champions in Greco-Roman wrestling heavyweight who won Athens in 2004 and 2012 uh, suspects gay activists to be behind the move. They say if they expel wrestling now, that means that gays will soon run the whole world. Uh, it turns out that this committee is headed by representatives of these minorities. He says the, he warns the future of humanity is now at stake. Quote, it's necessary for millions around the world to understand that this is a man's sport and to understand the need to continue the human race to go out and explain their position to the Olympic Committee. He said, we should prove and explain that in any other case, there is no future. 7% of women who have had sex used morning after pill. So 5.8 million have taken the pill, at least once federal uh, an analysis says. So the so-called morning after pills are plan B. And the U.S. is on the rise, a new report finds, uh, with 11% of sexually active women between 15 and 44 saying they've used such a pill at least once. So they report the usage has taken quite the jump from just 4% in 2002, the latest numbers around 2006 to 2010. Of those who have used Plan B or similar contraception emergency, have uh, half were worried their regular birth control failed, and the other half had not used birth control. 
says the numbers are even higher for women in their early 20s. Nearly one quarter of those who have had sex at least once have used this emergency contraceptive. And 70% of these people have read the story think it's brilliant that these women uh, will have a good chance of never having kids ever again if this actually um, starts to mess with their internal reproductive organs or sterilizes them in the process of trying to put off having kids. A wife's higher salary can affect men in the bathroom. It says those with well-paid wives are more likely to take Viagra. They studied salary and prescription data of more than 200,000 married couples. The effect could be seen even in families where the wife's salary was only slightly higher than the husband's. I thought, I, you know, I'm thinking about South Park where they said, uh, you know, it's uh, so, the one episode with the UPS man that, and, uh, you know, take Viagra to uh, basically spice up your love life because, you know, your wife looks like an old hag and you can't get it up anymore. Uh, so you take Viagra, where they were just trying to do role playing, but it's crazy because someone mentioned that you know dildos could have act, could actually be and pornography could actually um, also uh, lead to people not even having significant others. You know, I mean, on top of not being able to economically be able to afford a marriage and and a family and stuff like that, then on top of that, you have uh, these other things like Viagra and uh, dildos and pornography. And that keeps people from going out and meeting each other. So, Human Chain blocks Dresden neo Nazi march on firebombing's anniversary. So, most of you are probably know about Dresden. You've seen the pictures. They're just horrible stuff with the U.S. bombing, uh, at, you know, whatever, during the day, uh, British at night, or vice versa. Basically, a tag team. And it's, it's targets where, the, where these where people were civilians to bomb civilians and kill civilians as much as they could so that they wouldn't go to the factories and keep working and support. Uh, their, their country or their government. So over 13,000 anti-Nazi protesters have formed a human chain in the center of Dresden, Germany to block the neo-Nazi march which assembles annually to mark the anniversary of the Allied bombing of the city in 1945. So of course they put and spread extremist ideology. So it says here it's unbearable that all manner of right-wing extremists are attempting to take advantage of the day of commemoration, uh, advantage of the crusade of hate and revenge. So pretty interesting way of putting that uh, because this, uh, whoever this German is, you know, it's one of your family members, at least one cousin or something like that, was bombed, uh, was, was bombed by this uh, uh, blitz, by this air blitz by the Allies, targeting civilians. Now that's a crusade of hate and uh, revenge. It's not even revenge. They went on the attack. You have to remember when Germany had uh, the British, they had the British basically uh, backing up. I had them on, on the run there and actually gave them like a three-day grace period where they would cease fire and allow them to withdraw peacefully and go back to England. And they did that. I mean, they could have ended Britain right there, but they didn't because they wanted to focus on the real crusade of hate and revenge, which was coming from Bolsheviks in the East. Either way, they say it's an extremely worrying phenomenon, saying especially when extreme, extreme nationalist ideologies are getting a hold, you know, and the backdrop, of course, is globalization and people's sovereignty and culture are being destroyed uh, in the rest of Europe as there is an increased popularity in these far-right movements. Then we have this. Yes, Obama's drone war is legal, even if the Justice Department made a lousy case. So it goes on here and says the conservative columnist uh, from the Washington Post, Charles Crothin, mom or whatever, says the drone debate involves three distinct questions. Does the president have the right to kill enemies abroad using drones? Does the president have the right to kill Americans even without due process, and who can make those decisions? The answers to those questions cl clearly back the president's position, writes uh, Krauthammer. It says, self-defense and the laws of war justify the use of drones to kill the enemy. Becoming an enemy combat justifies the targeting of an American, and in war, the commander-in-chief is the ultimate authority on these questions. He finishes up by saying, for us earthlings, on the other hand, the case for Obama's drone war is strong. He writes, pity that the Justice Department couldn't make it. Then Southern California authorities accused of arresting man with camera who witnessed them killing sus a suspect. So they shot and killed a man on Monday. The Southern California police then apparently arrested another man who had recorded the incident or evidence. So it goes on here. It says a, par a parolee at large named John Christopher Amons was wanted in connection with an assault. So he's being tailed by authorities and they ended up shooting and killing him even though he wasn't armed. So I'm going to leave off here, guys. Have a good weekend. This is Gigi, and I'm Darko. Thank you.